Hey, Bastish B here for 64K and welcome to How To, episode number 12. And welcome back. So in this episode I'm going to have a look at the latest firmware update for the C64 Mini. This is firmware update number 1.3.1 and was released in December 2019. So with the latest firmware update there's 12 new little additions to the firmware. I'm going to run through six of the most important ones. These are the ones I just feel that most people are going to use or going to be using. A lot of the other stuff is kind of background stuff that's been put into the firmware just to help stabilize things. So we're not going to really go through that. I'm going to leave a link in the description to go straight to the page to download this. And it'll also have a description, a more detailed description of all the other stuff that I'm not going to go through. So you can read through it and see what it has. And because I haven't done one of these videos in almost a year, there hasn't really been any major updates to the system. I'm assuming a lot of new people have bought one of these C64 Minis and uh, I'm going to show you briefly, very quickly, how to update this to the latest firmware 1.3.1 and then from there we can go and start looking at all the new features. <laughs> So just follow my link and go to the Retro Games website, upgrade the C64 Mini's firmware. You can see here 1.3.1, make sure you got the right one. It has a little brief description of all the things that have been added. So you download that and put that straight onto your memory card. You don't have to do anything else, stick it into the Mini, turn it on. Then you go down to the settings page, right to the bottom to system information. You can check 1.3.1, just apply that. It'll take about 15 seconds for it to update and then it will reset the C64 Mini. And if you see the snazzy new logo, then you know you've updated to the right format. Okay, now that we've got that out of the way, let's start with update number one. Okay, so after you've done the update, you can scroll along a little bit in your carousel and you'll find a new game. They've added a new game to the C64 Mini. It is Farming Simulator. Okay, so <laughs> there's a few things about this. I think it's pretty cool that Retro Games managed to get this. This is a 2018 release. It's uh, like a newer release, so that's pretty cool. Last year they gave us Galencia for like an early Christmas present, which is a fantastic game. Check that one out if you haven't. This year we got Farming Simulator. Now for me personally, I don't like these kind of games. It's just, this is not a game for me. I just get no enjoyment out of farming in a video game. But I know there's a lot of people out there that like this kind of game. So that's pretty cool. Uh, my, my hat's off to Retro Games for getting it and adding it to the carousel. I think that's pretty cool. It's free, so I mean, try it out. Give it a go, see what happens. And let's move on to number two. Okay, so this is a pretty simplistic feature, but I think it's pretty useful, especially for new people to the Commodore 64 scene. You can now search the carousel games by like date they were released, composer, genre of games, etc, etc. So you can find maybe something you're looking for much quicker, especially by genre. But if you want to learn a little bit more about the C64 history, like searching by composers, for example, you can look at all the, all the games that Jerome Tell, he's a Sid composer, did and on the carousel. It's very cool. You can search by that. I think it's a nice little addition. It's uh, for veterans, it doesn't really make much difference. We all know this information, but for anybody that's new to the system, I think this is quite useful because there is quite a lot of games on the system in the carousel right now. So it's useful to finding things and also useful for knowledge about the C64 in general. And number three. So with this new option, it automatically adjusts the SID audio pitch of the C64 Mini, uh, the virtual SID chip that's in here. 
So uh, for NTC and PAL, so what that means is basically if you download a game or either an NTSC which is North America or PAL which is European, it tries to automatically adjust the pitch of the SID sound so it sounds correct. This is quite nice, uh, I think it's a good option, um, it's a good addition, it automatically does this though, so bear that in mind, it's going to try to uh, find exactly what is going to work for you on whatever you downloaded. So uh, I found that for the most part when it comes to audio issues, I haven't had a dramatic amount of them, I do jump between NTSC and PAL games. The most problem with audio on the C64 Mini though is demos. They seem to be hit and miss. Sometimes they sound really terrible. Sometimes they sound perfect. It's just uh, it's a bit of a gamble when it comes to demos. I'm hoping this audio option is going to fix a little bit and make it a little bit more stable, so it knows exactly what's happening. You've also got the option to disable this auto scaling, which is pretty cool. You add a flag NS to a CJM file. I've already gone through CJM files in the previous video for the C64 Mini. It's a whole video on its own, you can check it out. It explains everything to do with CJM files and how to edit them. They are very useful for the C64 Mini, I would highly suggest you check that out. They're also going to be used obviously in the new big version of the C64 Mini, the C64 Bigger. I don't know what they're calling it. It's this keyboard version, full keyboard version. So those files are also going to be used for that. So learning how to use them properly is useful for not only this, but for that. So you should definitely check that out. Okay, so this option allows you to compress the screen down smaller using a CJM file, which we just discussed. So if you're a newer user, you're probably wondering why would I want to do that? It really has options to change the aspect ratio like built in. Well, there are certain games, uh, Commodore 64 games that were made where the border of the screen or right by the edges they used up, they put graphics in there, maybe like score or maybe like uh, your options for your character, maybe the weapons and whatever, how to change them. They put them around the edges and when you change aspect ratio sometimes it cuts off the tops or the bottoms of that or maybe a little bit on the side. So this is a way to make sure that pretty much every single game you could ever play would be perfect. You'll be able to play it 100%. So I've done a little example here. You use FH on the CJM file. So like for example, I've done it for the game Living Daylights. So it should look something like this. Living Daylights underscore FH on a CJM file. and. Uh, Here's what it looks like originally, and then if you can see it compresses it, if with the FH you can see it's actually smaller. So for this game it doesn't really make any difference because there wasn't anything cut off, but this is just an example of how it's compressed it slightly, so pretty much every single game will be playable 100%. Okay, number 5. Okay, so with this option they basically configured the C64 Mini to work with a lot more third party controllers not only work with them to default setups so when you plug it in it automatically will work with say the shoulder button will work for fire and some of the other buttons might work exactly like it does with the regular controller that it comes with by default you can also edit these now or to a certain degree it's got a lot of information on the site uh, of how to do that so you've got a lot more options control wise yeah, so this cheap, horrible Super Nintendo controller that I bought uh, a while ago never used to work before. I think it could only work for the fire button worked and you couldn't use the D-pad, nothing else worked. Uh, it was, it's a useless controller anyway, but it didn't work on the Mini for whatever reason. Um, I just tried it with the new firmware update, as you can see in the video here I'm showing. It now works. I haven't done anything to configure it at all. I just plugged it in. Um, the D-pad works now perfectly, uh, X is fire, it also, the shoulder buttons work as fire, one of them at least, that's what it says on the website, it said it's configured so shoulder buttons work. What I also like though, um, I was surprised, the start button actually works, so you can, it works exactly like the, uh, the controller that it comes with, so you can go straight to the options, which is kind of cool to exit a game, um, I wasn't expecting that, so it, it just did that automatically. I haven't got any other controllers to really try out on the Mini to test what it does with other ones, but anyway, this piece of garbage kind of worked and uh, it definitely improved it, so that's that's a plus. 
Also the new firmware update is going to make it possible for you to use the new micro switch controller, the one that comes with the full keyboard size uh, C64, so that is quite cool as well. So you don't have to use the old clunky one that it comes with, that thing is uh, dodgy at best but it's still kind of almost the best, best controller to use for the Mini just because it's got so many buttons and they're really set up so it's pretty convenient to use. But the Micro Switch one, I haven't got a Micro Switch one yet, uh, you can buy them separately by the way. And uh, the one that comes with the big version, that'll be compatible and the, obviously the one you buy separately so you should definitely check that out. And number six. So this one I just wanted to add in here because I kind of found it really amusing <laughs> when I read it. It's, uh, it's really funny. The reason why I say it's funny is uh, they've added a, kind of a bug fix for the game Nobby the Aardvark. That one there, the one by Thalamus, the side-scrolling platform game. It's a pretty good game, but my god is it difficult. It's a ridiculously difficult game. So there's supposedly a bug in the game, so they've kind of fixed that. So this is going to be useful for the three people in the world that have managed to get past level two of Nobby the Oddbox, and you can actually go and see the ending. But uh, yeah, so they fixed that, which is kind of cool. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Thank you, Retro Games, for fixing Nobby the Oddbox. Now you can play it all the way to the end. And that's about it. That's all the features I'm going to mention. You can go to the website and check out any other information about any other things. I'll leave a link in the description, like I said, it'll take you straight there to do your download, to update your Mini. Also wanted to mention that I've done a whole lot of videos on the C64 Mini in the past. Each time they've had an update, it's going to be pretty useful for you as a new owner of a C64 Mini to go check those out. Each one explains all the updates. The updates never get erased, it's not like they go away. Each one is uh, added on, so you just get more and more options. And there's a lot of explanation for some of the more intricate stuff in all the videos. You should also check out the CJM one. That is very useful. Like I said earlier, it's gonna be useful for the full-size keyboard version as well. It's gonna use the same, same kind of options. So learning how to use those is gonna be very beneficial. And thanks for joining me, Bastish B at 64K. I hope you had a good time. If you can like and subscribe, that'll be greatly appreciated. I'll see you next time. Cheers.